This is KTVO's Good Morning Heartland. And welcome back. Today is show and tell for some biology students at Truman State University and Good Morning Heartland is on the go. Samantha Croy is live with more. Coming to you live, this is Good Morning Heartland on the go. Thanks, Ella. I'm at school this morning, so it's a little bit different learning about reptiles, which I know nothing about. But I am here with a wonderful teacher, Basha Dan, who is a student. We're outside the herpetology lab, and we have a tiger salamander. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good, good. So he's very active this morning. Mm -hmm. I think he's an early bird. Let's go ahead and just nickname him that. So tell me a little bit about a tiger salamander. Um, so tiger salamanders are actually amphibians. So here we have both reptiles and amphibians. And you can tell the difference because the reptiles will have scales and amphibians have this smooth skin that's really porous. So they absorb a lot of different things through their environment. Um, so this guy is actually really cool um, because his skin, um, not only does he absorb a lot of different waters and stuff through the environment, but he also secretes some pretty cool things. So when he gets threatened, what he'll do is he'll secrete a mucus. Um, so he kind of coats his body in this slimy snot stuff. Um, and it's actually um, really bitter tasting. So if something were to come and try and take a bite out of him, um, it would be really nasty tasting. And that's kind of how he protects himself. All right, well, that's a good way of protection. Can we go ahead and kind of bring him around a little bit? We'll showcase his face because he is cute. I'm slowly warming up to all of these animals here. So tell me a little bit. You said this is a personal pet. And what is he here in the lab for? Um, so tiger salamanders are actually native to Missouri. Um, so we do have a tiger salamander that is um, owned by the lab. Uh, but he, these guys are burrowing animals, so he has created a nice little burrow in his habitat, and we can't seem to find him most of the time. Um, so this guy is just easier for us to get out, um, and he's really, really charismatic, likes to be out and around. So Very exciting. He has a lot of personality, I can already tell. So now let's bring in, we have another one. So we have a chameleon. Let's bring him on in. And when I saw him last, he had a little bit of a sore eye. So how's that doing? Um, it's doing better. So we're definitely still treating it, um, giving him lots of extra vitamins to kind of help him get over that um, deficiency in his vitamins. But. Now, and he is friendly, of course. All these animals are friendly. Um, but he's not so much an early bird. So getting him out this morning, he did want to, you know, Taste your finger a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so these guys um, actually will show their emotions a lot by changing color. Um, so specifically with this guy, when he uh, gets angry or scared, what he'll do is he'll puff his body up really big so he um, looks big and mean. And what he'll do is he'll turn those ridges on his head purple, mm -hmm. and those spots all along the side of his body will really become really visible. Now, this guy is small, just like Ella and I, so maybe that's what we need to do, Ella. We need to puff up our bodies to make us look really mean and scary when we need to. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for joining me with these animals. We'll let them get back to bed. But when we come back, we have some big surprises in store. I'm a little nervous here. But for now, Good Morning Heartland will continue right after this. Welcome back. As you know, Samantha is back in school today getting a lesson in Reptiles 101. Good Morning Heartland is on the go. Let's see which reptiles she's learning about right now. Coming to you live. This is Good Morning Heartland on the go. Thanks, Ella. That's absolutely right. I am back at school this morning at Truman University, right outside the herpetology lab, here with student Basha Dan. We have our second round of some animals headed our way. Now, are both of these reptiles? Yes, so these both are reptiles. And this one actually is commonly mistaken for a snake. So this is called a sheltopusic, and it's actually um, a legless lizard. It doesn't look like a lizard at all, and it scares me. My heart is beating. That's why I wore a scarf today. You can't see it. Um, it's slowly growing on me, though, and it is smaller than what we have coming up next. But how common is a legless lizard? Um, so legless lizards on the evolutionary scale are pretty common. Um, so there have been many different times where lizards have evolved legless 
poisonous um, for different purposes. And technically, snakes are part of the same um, phylogenetic groups as lizards, so um, it's very common to see lizards that have evolved no legs. Now this one, it does have a unique name because it does reference slightly the snake from Harry Potter. And uh, we have Tom Riddle, evil other side brother is back there, Voldemort. But we are running out of time, so let's go ahead and bring Bertha in. Now the funny thing about Bertha is that she is not a she. She is a he because you tested the snake and found out, okay, her face is a little too close to me. Um, you found out that she is a he just based on your test. Mm -hmm, yeah, so typically um, what you have to do because um, snakes, you can't really tell from looking at them on the outside uh, whether or not they're male or female. So we actually had to take a metal probe and probe her um, to find out that she was in fact a male. And she is, or he, whichever you prefer, is 13 feet, mm -hmm. about 60 pounds, I think, and she can grow from there. She's not done yet. Right. Um, so the largest, I think, recorded Burmese python in the wild was about 20 feet long. So um, that's definitely on the high end of Burmese pythons. Um, so yeah. She's looking at us. She really likes being on camera. And she's kind of calmed down a little bit, I think. But just for your sake, because she can be a little bit heavy, we're going to go ahead and send it back. But I really appreciate all of you guys coming out, everyone that's behind the scenes bringing the animals out, and Basha, you as well.